<sighs> What's up? I'm back. <laughs> I know it's been about, I've been on this like five week hiatus, <laughs> but it wasn't my fault. So the reason why is because I threw my back out and um, I just wasn't able to do much of anything for a while. But now I am gonna take you through how to draw a cow for my uh, post back injury debut. So having said that, um, you know, this one's actually really cool because it's a little bit longer. And in this one, I'm gonna be taking you guys through exactly how to lay out those base layers with your soft charcoals, um, with your brushwork. Um, I'm also gonna be showing you some really cool tricks with how you can use your smudgers to kind of build your lower values and kind of bring out that contrast and, and really accentuate your value scale. I'm also gonna be showing you some really cool detail effects that you can use with um, your hard charcoals and even your medium charcoals. And I'm also going to be showing you some really cool brush work because I am using a new brush that I kind of hijacked from my wife. Don't tell her. Ah, so having said all of that, I hope you enjoy it and uh, let go. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be using a graphite pencil and a hoo hoo eraser, a Pentel Click eraser, and the trusty Mono Zero eraser. Yes. We're also going to be using soft, medium, and hard grade charcoal pencils. And of course, a, a sandpaper strip for grinding our pencils down to powder, and a piece of tone check paper for checking our tones. We're also going to be using a number two and a three sixteenths smudger. And in this one, we're going to be using not only our trusty number six brush, but uh, a uh, an elf brush that I stole from my wife's makeup bag. <laughs> okay. So of course, the first step in drawing anything is that we want to identify the basic shape of our reference image. And of course, shape by definition is uh, the form of an object or its external boundary, um, outline or external surface. So, you know, as opposed to other properties in drawing like, you know, color and texture or material type. So it, this is just specifically you know, a, a two-dimensional area that uh, is defined by a change in value through, of course, the layering of, of uh, tones uh, in order to achieve a three-dimensional appearance. So simply think of it like this. Your outline is that two-dimensional area. It's just the simple framework, the outside edges of breaks um, in tone, or another word for tone is um, the value, right? the difference between high values and, uh, and low values. So when it comes to proportions like this here, you'll take the bottom of the eye and just more or less, more or less eyeball it, right? For those of you that have been following me for a while, you understand already that um, I am not a fan of uh, drawing perfect drawings. I think that artists should try the best that they can. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, freehanding. Um, my drawings because it helps you solidify that muscle memory and that hand-eye coordination. So here, you know, if you make a mistake, you can go ahead and hit it with your Mono Zero eraser and, uh, and we can do that. That's not a problem at all. The big thing with this step is just make sure that when you're laying down um, the basic uh, shape of your reference image that you use a very light pressure control, right? There's no need to, to push hard you know, in this step. That way, you know, if you do make a proportion error, um, it's easily corrected with your, um, with your eraser work. The last thing you want is to have pressed uh, too hard and, you know, 
you go to erase that line and yet there's still still some of it there but the big thing with uh, drawing outlines is just try to use certain points in the reference image to help you dial in on your proportions say for example i used the nostril of this cow to begin laying down where I wanted um, my lower lip to be. But just make sure that you take your time and remember this, when, when you take your time nine times out of ten, what's going to happen is that your outline of your basic shape is going to be much more accurate um, when it comes to your end product. So, so say here, like I'm going to use this point right here, and right about there is where I'm going to draw out the shoulder uh, of this cow. And then here you can notice uh, some changes in, in, uh, in value here. That's going to be a lower value. And you can kind of solidify where this, uh, the jowl of this cow is going to be. So we'll just erase that and re-solidify that there. And then there's another lower value right here. So we just want to kind of solidify that as well. It's the, it looks like it's the shadow of the uh, cow's ear. Let's clean that up. Boom. And as you can see here, it looks like there's an ear tag, so we just want to very lightly go in and kind of put down where that ear tag would be. And remember, all we're doing in this step is we're, we are more or less uh, just framing where all of the, the variations in value when it comes to our charcoal um, are going to be. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not committed at this step. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're framing uh, the underlying form. Um, remember what I said, you know, shape is uh, defined as the, you know, the outer contour of an object, which is how, you know, a viewer's eye will first perceive it and, uh, you know, begin to make sense of it. Now, when it comes to that three-dimensional form, form is three-dimensional where shape is only ever going to be two-dimensional. So this is what I have dubbed framing the form uh, in a drawing. And, and this is done in order to achieve a, a three-dimensional appearance. So we use what I call form lines. And that's what these are here. Because we already have our shape, right? You know, that outside contour. But, but the frame is all of our other contours. And because of this, we go from a two-dimensional framework to a three-dimensional framework. Okay, so now we're gonna start slinging some charcoal. So we're gonna grab our tone check paper, and what I've done here is I've actually taken uh, some soft charcoal, I've grinded it on to my sandpaper strip, and thus I've made it uh, a powdered uh, charcoal. And so I'm just gonna take my number six brush, and of course, when it comes to this step, we are using uh, an extremely light pressure control, and we are targeting the lowest values on the value scale uh, first. And the reason why we want to use a very light pressure control is because when it comes to the three-layered method, um, it is very much that. It is a layering process, and we are laying down the soft charcoal um, with the understanding that we are going to be going back in with our mono zero eraser, and we are going to be doing what they call uh, retrieving our uh, higher values. And so you want to make sure that the charcoal is more or less resting on top of the paper. And if you use too much pressure control, if you push the brush too far into the paper, all of a sudden that charcoal is embedded in the paper, right? And that's not what we want. We want to be able to lift that out. So now here, we're taking our number two sweater and uh, same principle as the brush. I am targeting um, and building up uh, those low values, right? One of the things that you'll find as you use this specific method uh, more and more is that when you go ahead and you start to target um, your 
lower values. First, what will happen is the, that the higher values uh, tend to take care of, of themselves. And of course, right now, we're, we're more or less building up that, uh, that underlying form of how the fur in this ear actually lays, right? But we haven't necessarily messed with texture. Now here I'm doing a little trick where I'm putting my smudger down on the paper and then I'm just kind of pulling straight up. And as you can see, it kind of we're starting to build that texture um, on the outside edge of the of the cow's ear. But all we're doing is targeting um, the the lower values, right? And this is kind of cool. You can stand the smudger up on end like this, and you can start to build um, implied lines as opposed to uh, defined lines. And I'll I'll touch base on on uh, line work and line definition um, here in a little bit. Okay. So now. As I was mentioning before, we've taken our monozoa eraser, and I don't know if you can see that, but I've taken a razor and I've cut um, the, the eraser tip at an angle. And what this allows for is this allows for a, uh, a more pinpoint uh, look when it comes to uh, my, my line work. So what we're doing here is we are retrieving our higher values, and this is the first step uh, in the three-layered method to building uh, that texture, right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at the reference image, and as you look at the reference image, one of the things you'll note about this uh, specific ear is that the fur and the texture on the outside of the ear left of the ear tag of the cow is uh, same texture but different look, and the reason why is because here, where I'm hitting uh, the paper, the hair is actually all laying one way. Right, so so it has it has um, a very unified look, where all of the hair to the left of the ear tag is it, it's kind of going in all sorts of directions, and it's much more it has much more of a fluffy look, right? But the big thing when it comes to your eraser work is when you pull, you know, when you when you they call it striking, when you strike the paper, just make sure you give it one solid pull, and then you lift up, and then when you go to hit uh, and draw another line with your Monozoa eraser, make sure that there's a slight break in value between each. That way you'll um, bring out the contrast um, in your texture. So now here we are. This is uh, the next uh, layer. And we are using a hard charcoal, of course. Um, for those of you that don't know, or maybe this is your first tutorial uh, drawing with me, uh, I use a hard charcoal for this step because as opposed to the medium and uh, the soft uh, charcoals, hard charcoal has the most amount of binder in it uh, from the manufacturing process, and because of that, it holds together very well. Um, and uh, it throws a slightly higher value, but um, the tip of the pencil is uh, much more resilient to breakage um, as opposed to the medium and the soft charcoals. And that's simply because as you go from a hard to a soft charcoal, your binder amount gets a less and less, which is one of the reasons why we used the soft charcoal for the uh, base layering is because there's little to no binder in it. And so it spreads nice and evenly and uh, easily uh, onto the paper so but now as you can see that texture is really starting to come out and simply all i've been doing is is more or less highlighting all of my higher values with my uh, hard charcoal so now here i'm going to go in with my uh, number six brush and i'm just going to very lightly very light pressure control i uh, hit all this and what this is doing for us is this is adding a form of gradation to the drawing and uh, softening up uh, that to that texture, which is perfect. That's what we want. If you look at this here, um, it, it does have a very uh, fluffy, very you know, soft looking uh, texture to it. So, so now what I'm doing here is I'm taking a medium charcoal, and the reason why I'm using a medium charcoal 
as opposed to the hard charcoal for this step is because I want to continue to build up those uh, those lower values where we see them and and uh, the medium charcoal of course like I mentioned before has less binder in it than the hard charcoal so it does tend to throw a, a lower uh, value. So now here I don't actually like the way that looked so I'm gonna hit it with my mono zero eraser. I'm gonna take my graphite pencil here and I'm just gonna more or less kind of re-solidify where I want this line to be. Looks like that ear tag's at a slight angle, so I'm going to leave the left side slightly higher and draw that line down so that looks a little bit more accurate to the reference image. Again, very light pressure control with the graphite, and this is simply to frame the truckle to come. So. so now what I'm doing is I'm taking my smudger and I'm just putting on some, uh, some soft charcoal here. I'm going to do a little tone check. Because as you can see on that ear tag, it looks like there's a lot of, it's like really blotchy almost like stained. So this is how I'm going to go in and I'm going to I'm going to kind of convey that that same type of look. So this is a 3 16 smudger as opposed to the number two that we were using earlier. And I'm just very, very lightly hitting this paper. And I'm more or less skipping across the paper. I'm going to go vertical and I'm just going to go horizontal real quick. So see that? See how that kind of gives us more of a, a blotchy look, right? And that's it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in with the medium charcoal. And I like to use medium charcoals to solidify defined lines. So now remember how I, I was talking about how you could use the tip of the smudger and, and build an implied line? Well here, these are uh, what they call uh, defined lines. And the big difference between an implied line versus uh, a defined line is that, you know, implied lines, uh, you know, occurs when you continue a line after a small break and that line proceeds uh, in the same direction or it's very soft, right? Where a defined line occurs when you continue a line without any break, and typically you have a mid to, to heavy line weight, right? Now, line weight uh, is used uh, basically to, to describe the strength of a line or more or less how light or dark it appears uh, onto the paper. But now here I'm just going through and I'm just uh, using my 316 smudger and I'm just continuing to kind of build those those lower values and kind of that that fluffiness and then again just going back through with uh, my hard charcoal and just kind of trying to bring out as much of that texture in the wake of how that hair flows um, across across the paper and that's the really cool thing about the three layered method is if you want to go back and you want to continue to build and build and build and build your 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 detail um, you can do that. You know, there's there's no real right or wrong way there, and that's one of the reasons why I love to teach this method is because it does add for um, flexibility for each individual artist. So I'll just hit this real quick, just kind of soften it up and bring out that gradation. And here's kind of a cool trick. If you want to, you can kind of more or less press the paper, use a mid to heavier pressure control, and just kind of soften soften this up. And then you can go in with your Mono Zero Eraser, and uh, we're going to bring out some, some higher values. All right, it looks like the hair is kind of flowing this way out of this part of it. And then we can kind of bring this down and see how this hair goes vertical versus the hair that we just hit that's horizontal. And this is one of the things that I like about the Mono Zero Eraser and retrieving those higher values is that you have all the power here. So you can really bring out the flow of for um, however you want. And here's kind of a cool trick. This is a way that you can go in and you can kind of get that, you know, kind of that that furry look. So, okay, we are cruising. Cruising right along. Yeah. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm taking my number six and I'm just loading up some soft charcoal here. And this is uh, basically the same thing that we did for the ear. So, base layer, right? That's what this is. This is the base layer and when it comes to the base layer again very light pressure control and just be be uh, conscious of uh, the direction that uh, that you're pulling uh, your charcoal across the paper as you can see there are uh, different layers of hair and so this is a way that we can convey those breaks in the hair with our base layering we can just take our brush and stand it up on end and more or less kind of blotch the paper right 
just like this here, see that? Just kind of a quick trick. I mean, you could do this on the next uh, step with the smudger, but you know, this is, uh, the point of these tutorials is to teach you guys all the tricks, you know, all the little shortcuts that'll save you time. You know, and if monetizing yourself and being able to create a lot of quality art very quickly is something that you want to do, uh, then, you know, it's shortcuts like this that'll, that'll help you uh, build your, your skill set. So, but that's all we're doing here. This is just the base layer. Just like we laid down that base layer for the left ear, we are laying down that base layer for uh, the side of uh, the cow's face uh, and the forehead. So, again, we are building up uh, dark values. And we also want to make sure that we lay down a, 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 a dark enough value, you know, a low enough value in that base layer to where when we go to retrieve with our Montezuma eraser, that those higher values stand out, right? Because if you just hit it one time with one layer and it's too high of a value, well, high value onto high value, it doesn't really bring out that contrast as much, right? Between the value and then the mid value. But if you lay down a really nice lower value on your base layer and then you hit it and retrieve it with your Montezuma eraser, bring out all those high values, that contrast, right? That's gonna jump out at your viewer's eye um, much more. So just, uh, just keep that in mind. But here, much like with the ear, the big thing and I've mentioned this in a lot of my other tutorials that I have on Skillshare when it comes to doing pet portraits and drawing dogs, especially because they're, they're so furry, is the direction, right? The direction that you're pulling, the direction that those higher value breaks um, are flowing, if you will. That is going to speak volumes to not only the um, accuracy of your drawing to uh, your reference image, but um, it's just it just gives an overall better looking um, aesthetic to someone that, that looks at, uh, at your drawing. So, so you see how there's that, that cow lick in the, in the center of the cow's forehead, you know, that swirl where it seems like all the fur is kind of, kind of coming together. Well, here's a way that we can kind of bring that out. I'm, I'm pulling and I'm paying attention to the flow of the hair and the direction. And then of course the length um, of the hair. But again, remember, this is just the second step, right? We're going to be going in with, uh, you know, a hard, a hard charcoal. We're also going to be going in with smudger work, and we're really going to be solidifying um, the form and, and the texture of, of the, of that hair. So. But like say here for example, there's a very high value immediately underneath the cow's eye. So this is uh, one of the ways that we can convey that. I'm just pulling vertical. Up down, and then I'm bringing out the texture in the lower values. And do you see the contrast difference? between like immediately under the cow's eye and then right here where there's that lower value. Do you see how you can see those higher values a lot better than you can under the eye? That's that contrast that I was talking about. So just uh, just keep that in mind. So here we are, I'm gonna switch it up. We're gonna go to a uh, medium charcoal. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually put in a defined line. I'm just gonna bust this out, boom, there we are. And I'm going to fill this in real light pressure control. You don't need to press very hard at all. One of the things you'll find when it comes to really packing in lower values in your drawing in certain places, like say the eye, is that if you press too hard, you might risk scratching the paper, right? Um, you've heard me say, you know, let your tools work for you. Uh, the more time you spend uh, on a specific area um, of your drawing, um, the, the lower that value uh, will become. So. And here I'm just going to solidify that. So now what that's effectively done is that's created that that eyelid above um, the cow's eye. And it looks like there's just some some eyelashes here. So I'm just going to kind of bust those out real quick. And then we got the the bottom of the eye here. So I'm just going to put another defined line right there. And now I'm just going to take my 316 smudger. I'm using my 3 16ths when it comes to the eye because the eye is a very, very um, small place. I don't have a lot of room for error, so I want to make sure that I have pinpoint control when I go in there and I, and I start smudging and I start bringing out um, my lower values, right? There we go, that's looking good. So now here we are. Um, one of the things you'll find with the overall texture of uh, drawing cows, especially 
uh, Macau that looks somewhat like this, is that um, you are going to be relying on uh, your hard charcoal uh, a lot. And the reason why is because um, it does have the, the most amount of binder in it, so in the wake of detail work, especially, you know, this, this shorter hair, um, it's going to be, um, it, it's going to be the best option, right? If you go in trying to use a soft charcoal for your line work in your hair, you're going to be thoroughly disappointed because that soft charcoal is just going to, it's just going to fall apart and you're going to break your tips off and you're not going to get the, you know, the really, really, you know, skinny, um, you know, line weight um, or line quality that you want. So right here, here, here's a nice uh, light uh, line. Now line quality, I don't think I touched up on that. So line quality is uh, the relative thickness um, or thinness of a line. And it's kind of cool because when an artist varies that line quality, they can basically show form in a drawing with literally just the use um, of lines. So, but even um, you know the, this, these textural lines that I'm that I'm laying down. Remember how I was going in with my hard charcoal and I was highlighting those uh, the high values in the ear. Well, that's pretty much the exact same thing that I'm doing here. Um, only difference is is my uh, the the length of my strikes. Um, is different. It is um, basically mimicking um, all of the higher value texture that I brought out with uh, my Mono Zero Eraser. And a cool way to kind of cheat um, at this point is that if you literally just follow the contours of your high values, you don't even necessarily have to really think about which way you're, you need to pull your hard charcoal because you're using your, your high values that you just um, retrieved with your mono zero eraser uh, as a guide right as a framework for for where to strike with your um with your hard charcoal so and the cool thing with this step is as you can see you can really start to solidify exactly where those lower values are and you can really start to to bring out that textural um, element uh, of of the hair uh, in the cow's face and uh, in the cow's cheeks We're going to slow this down for a second, and that's and that's really it. Just just take your time, just take your time. You don't you don't need to draw fast. Remember, the slower you draw, typically, um, the more accurate um, you will draw. So then here I'm just hitting this real light, real light. Uh, always remember this when it comes to any kind of brush work. Really light pressure control. Brushes are very powerful, especially when it comes to this method. You don't want to you don't want to erase all the work that you just did. So. So now this is the first time I've ever used uh, this brush. It is cut at a diagonal, so it gives me um, much more control than, than the fluffy round number six brush because it is smaller. Like I said, I stole this out of my, out of my wife's makeup bag, so <laughs> Shh, she doesn't know. But the cool thing, one of the reasons why I like to use it is because I'm able to convey these, these really specific lower values where I need to. Okay. So now I'm going to take my, uh, my three sixteenths and I'm going to stand it up on end. And if you actually look at uh, the cow's, all of his hair, you know, that he's got on the tippy top of his, uh, of his, of his forehead, what I'm doing here is I'm basically, uh, doing exactly what I did with the brush. Only I want to have a little bit more, um, pinpoint control, right? So I'm laying down a base layer of uh, soft charcoal. And the big thing between base layering with your smudgers versus base layering with your brushes is you'll base layer with your smudgers in, uh, in tighter areas, right? Where you don't have as much room for error. And now I'm just going through with my models or eraser and I'm just kind of solidifying this. And now I'm going to use my, my little elf brush here. And because it's smaller and I'm able to stand it up on its point, and I'm able to have a lot more uh, control than I would ever have with uh, my number six. But basically what I'm doing is I'm softening this up and I'm also building uh, those, uh, those lower values. So you see how it gives me a really, really soft look? Well, this is perfect because it's giving me a soft look. It's also giving me that nice base layer of soft charcoal. And I can go in with my Mono Zero Eraser here now. And I can go in and I can start to build up that texture. And of course I'm pulling those lines, those high value lines, 
um, in the same direction as we see uh, in the reference image. And this is texture, this is a layer of texture. And then I'm gonna be going in with uh, my hard charcoal here. And this is where I start to solidify, right? I start to focus on exactly where those uh, lower values are. And I highlight my higher values. And I, this is where you can see that form of how that hair just kind of, you know, some of it lays this way and then a little bit of it lays over the top and then some lays to the, to the left. This is where that detail work really jumps out at us. And, and this is how we accomplish that. So, bing, bada, boom, yeah. Love it. It's looking good, looking good. But that's the, that's the thing with me, guys, is I'm not trying to draw things uh, perfect. You know, you've heard me say before, Salvador Dali is one of my, one of my favorite artists because he was quoted with saying, don't worry about perfection, right? You'll never reach it. And why would you, honestly? Why would you want to be able to draw something perfect? That's no fun. I hope to always, always be learning. So, okay, so here we are. So now remember how I said that we could continue to build the textural elements of the hair with our smudger? So we've taken the number two smudger, not the three sixteenths, but what we're able to do here is this basically blends, but it but it blends in certain points and it gives us more control than the brush does. So this is where we're able to go in and we're able to really pinpoint those lower values while simultaneously getting a really nice blend with everything. And you know, and if it's too much, you can always go back in, like if you've over blended in a certain area and you wanna bring out those higher values with your models or eraser and kind of bring back some of that textural element, you can do that. You can do that, right? This method is extremely flexible that way. And so, this is looking pretty good. Okay, number six brush, loading it up with some soft charcoal here. It's more or less something like that. That's, that's a nice tone. Okay, so now we're doing the exact same thing that we did for the other side of the forehead. But bear in mind, see? See how I'm starting from that cow lick and then I'm pulling to the right, right? Because if you look at the reference image, that's the direction that that hair flows on this side of the cow's forehead. So we want to make sure that we uh, stay true uh, to that. And where that hair is kind of matted and you can kind of see how it there's a layer that lays on top of another layer and then there's like a ball almost like a bald area right before the top of the eyelid we want we can lay that down with uh with our brush and so now that we have that we're going in with our monozoro eraser same same thing we're keeping that underlying form in mind and we are doing short little pulls and we're bringing out that that texture again this isn't this isn't the texture um um, completely this is just a layer of texture and we'll be able to go in uh, with our hard charcoal and, and even um, our smudger work and really solidify um, and, and complete um, this texture as we move forward so here we just want to bring out that swirl and remember the big thing when it comes to uh, retrieving your high values with your monozo eraser is when you pull don't be afraid to leave those lower values in between each stroke, right? And that way you you bring out a good amount of contrast so that your drawing somewhat pops, right? Okay. So now I'm gonna take my my number two smudger. And again I'm doing this because I want more control. But I'm just going in and I'm building up those lower values where there's that that where that hair is kind of kind of matted, right? You see that in the reference image. And then if it's too much, or if you want a higher value, you can go in and retrieve it, just like this. Boom. Just like that. Okay. So going back to the smudger. Remember, we're targeting those lower values first. Focus on the low values and the high values will take care of themselves. But I'm basically just holding my smudger sideways and I'm, I'm just very lightly touching and pulling and pushing, right? And the reason why I'm doing it left to right like this is because that's the way that, that hair um, 
flows uh, in the reference image. But see that, see how now all of a sudden, just like that, you have that, that layered look. That's how we achieve that, just like that. And then here, a little implied line, right? This isn't a defined line, just an implied line that we wanted to bring out with uh, the tip of our smudger. Okay. So now, again, next step in the textural element of uh, the forehead is uh, using our hard charcoal. And we're just highlighting and, go and going in the same uh, direction uh, that uh, our high values flow. And this is just bringing out that 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 furriness, that you know that that texture, right? Because if we didn't do this, the drawing itself would look just too soft. It it wouldn't look um, as realistic um, as it could. So, so just be aware of that. And and this step is one of those steps where you know you definitely you definitely want to take your time. Um, you know, unless you're under a time crunch or something, but. But this is this is how we we start to we start to convey that. And just like you want to pay attention to the length of the, your poles when you're retrieving your high values, you want to make sure that you're doing the same thing with your uh, hard charcoal pencil as well. So, okay. So now we're kind of bringing out this uh, this eye here with our uh, with our hard charcoal. And I think what I want to do is I'm just going to put a I'm just going to put a defined line right here. But do you see how much higher in value that line is compared to like when we laid down the same line on the other side of the face with a medium charcoal? You see that difference? That's that binder. You know, more binder, less charcoal onto the paper, right? Because there's essentially just more glue in it, right? And that's why it doesn't convey such a low value as compared to, to that medium charcoal that has um, less binder in it, more charcoal, right? So. Okay, so now that we've kind of more or less framed this this eye up with our hard charcoal, it, this needs to be a little a little higher of a value. So it's going to retrieve to retrieve that. Now I've switched it up, and I've gone ahead and I've grabbed my my medium charcoal. And in this specific drawing, there's there's not a lot of detail work to do. So the big thing is just the the form and the structure of the eye. That's that's the the big thing that we need to focus on with uh, the drawing of this cow. So, but again, I'm outlining the eye. I actually I actually need this to be a, a little bit more spaced out. There we are. Okay. And uh, then I can go ahead and I can start to more or less kind of frame where I want this to be. So I'm going to pull this line out, this defined line, just like this. Boom, and all of a sudden, we have a nice uh, nice eyelid, right? And we've effectively kind of kind of pushed that pushed that eye in to its socket where it belongs. Okay, and then right here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to re-highlight that. There we are. And then we got and then we got these eyelashes. I'm just going to kind of pull these out. And then notice how I kind of you know, stick to that roundedness with the eye. And I'm not pushing very hard at all. I'm just going over the medium charcoal again and again uh, and again. And the reason why I'm doing it with a very, very light pressure control is because I don't want to scratch the paper. You know, you know how you always have those lines in paper if you scratch it or if you push too hard. I have a really light pressure control and just continue to go over the same spot over and over again. And because you're using a light pressure control, you're not going to scratch the paper and you're going to slowly build up um, that, that low value that you want. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So now taking my 3 16 smudger here. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to build this, build it, make it a little lower in value. Okay. So now take the brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this real light, real light pressure control. And I'm just more or less getting a nice, uh, nice gradation on all this texture here. There we go. So if you look at the reference image, do you see those lower values in, in the hair? 
like and you can do this with a brush um, or you can also do this uh, with with the smudger it, it really doesn't matter both will both will do the job um, I would say that if you've already gone through and you've hit your texture and pulled out all of your high values with your mono zero eraser then probably use a smudger just because you're gonna have more control unless of course you want to go for that that fluffier look then, then definitely uh, use the brush But see here how with the brush on this uh, other ear, I just went ahead and I hit hit the top where there's the lowest value in the reference image, and then I pulled it in the same direction as the reference image, uh, how the hair f uh, flows from the very top all the way to the ear tag, right? And and again, very light pressure control. I want the soft charcoal to rest on top of the paper. So now here we are. I'm going in with my smudger. And I'm just continuing to add more charcoal in places of inherently lower value. So, and the reason why I'm using the smudger is because I, I do want more control, right? It's really hard to kind of get in there and really start to, to get into those tight spaces uh, with a brush, even that elf brush, um, it's, it, it's tough. So uh, smudgers are your best friend and it's amazing the more you use them, uh, you start to realize all of the different things that, uh, that they can do for you. So, so we've done the base layer with the, with the brush. We've gone in and we're building those lower values and basically really solidifying the form of how this hair all flows and makes up this ear, right? And then the flow of how you push and pull your smudger is just as crucial as the direction that you pull with your brush. And it's just as crucial as the direction that you pull with your Montezora eraser when you go in to bring out the high values and start to build uh, the textural element of the ear. So, I just got some some little low values here that I want to kind of kind of build up and but see see this here see how we can go in with the uh, with the smudger and it and it gives us kind of that that contrast from low to high value and kind of the beginnings of texture. That's what I was talking about with that. So, okay, so now mono zero eraser. And one of the things about this step that it's kind of hard to see in these tutorials is that you want to probably, I would say every 15 to 25 strokes, take your eraser tip and rub it and clean it on like say your pant leg. Um, don't, don't touch it and rub it with your fingers because you're gonna put oil on the eraser tip and charcoal loves the oil from your hands. It's one of the reasons why I wear a drawing glove is to keep the oil from my hands off of the paper and away from the charcoal. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we've gone through and we have uh, retrieved our high values with our Mono Zero Eraser, I'm simply going through uh, with the charcoal. So we're doing the exact same thing. This is the exact same approach that we did for the left ear. We're doing uh, to the right ear. Of course, the right ear in this reference image is uh, slightly different than the left ear, but uh, the premise and uh, and the approach is uh, completely the same as uh, as the other one. So, so here we go. So I got laid down the base layer, gone through and built up those uh, lower values with my smudger. I've hit it with my Mono Zero Eraser and retrieved high values. I've hit it with my hard charcoal and started to build um, the contrast between high and low values and bringing out texture. So now I'm just taking my medium charcoal. And just like we brought out that ear tag, we want to make this ear tag look like it's inside of the ear, right, slightly. But we also want to make it look like it's laying on top of the ear. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to take uh, a defined line here, nice mid midline quality, nice midline weight. When it comes to lines and line work in drawings, you'll discover that your line quality and your line weight uh, most often uh, uh, run parallel to each other, meaning if you have a high line quality, you're going to have a, a, a high line weight. If you have a low line quality, you're going to have a low line weight. Right? But you see that? We put that, that line on there, and now all of a sudden that tag is um, brought forward while the ear that it's on is uh, pushed back slightly. So 
that uh, speaks to that uh, that third dimension, right? That that form that um, is one of the hardest things to convey um, in drawing. So that's how we do that. And now we're just going in. We're continuing to build up those lower values. Um, this. Uh, this right ear is a slightly fluffier, right? Slightly softer than uh, than its counterpart, the left ear. So this is how we uh, really bring out that softness. When you when you look at this drawing, it is a ton of implied lines, right? Ton of implied lines. Um, really, the only places that you're going to see defined lines are, of course, the ear tags, um, the eyes. And, uh, and the nose and, and the tongue and the, and the lower lip of, uh, of this drawing. But everything else is going to be implied. Okay. That is looking good. So now here's a, a point where you can use a, a medium charcoal because you want that lower value. And just, just very, very lightly hit it a little here, a little there, and use a very light pressure control. One of the things that you'll find with medium charcoals is because there's less binder in it than hard charcoal, it, it just it wants to throw a, a low value, so you don't have to use um, very um, heavy uh, pressure control at all when you're when you're drawing it and putting it onto the paper. So, but here I'm just taking my smudger and just more or less uh, kind of blending and, and bringing out the uh, the form of that ear and, and how it how it attaches to the side of the cow's head. So. Okie dokie. So now what we're doing, we're taking that number six brush, building it up with some soft charcoal here. And now if you look, you see how there's some form in the cheek. Let's this let's bring that out. So here what I'm doing is I'm just I'm focusing on those lower values. Remember how I always say, focus on conveying your low values and your high values will take care of themselves. The thing with the brushwork is as it is loaded up with charcoal, when you first strike the paper, it's going to be conveying the lowest value um, that it can. And then as you continue right, to hit the paper with your brush, your value is going to get uh, gradually um, higher and higher. And the reason why is because there's less and less charcoal powder on your brush. So just be aware of that. But now, see, if you look at the reference image, you see how there's those there's that form, right? How it kind of almost like it's like a ripple in in the uh, in the cheek of the cow. Well, this is how with our base layering we can start to we can start to convey that that underlying form, right? I know I I must repeat myself a lot when it comes to focus on your low values first, but that is literally the trick. That is a huge component <laughs> of this of this drawing method so if you can always remember that and that becomes a part of your your approach you i think you'll be better for it and i think you'll be much happier with uh with your drawings so but here what we're doing is we're basically doing the exact same thing that we did to the ear right now that we've laid down that base layer of soft charcoal we're going in and i'm i'm building up all of the areas where there's going to be a lower value and see here, you see how you can start to convey texture even with your smudger work. So, just like that, we did those lines and then we added a slight lower value on top and all of a sudden we have that roll that you see um, just immediately under the cow's eye and how it goes all the way to the nose. Okay. So I just want to continue to build build these lower values, and it looks like these these lower values come all the way down to to about the, about the chin. So okay, so now step number three, we are taking our mono zero eraser and we are retrieving those those high values just like this. Again, paying attention to flow, paying attention to uh, length. Um, of of the hair and and of uh, and of the texture of of this cow. We are also bearing in mind uh, our eraser strokes and exactly how far away and how close they are. And we're also pulling in the same direction that that form is. So, and now we're hitting it with our brush. Nice gradation, kind of blending everything together, but we're not pushing too hard because we don't want to get rid of all of our detail work. And now I'm simply going in. With, uh, with the hard charcoal. And um, I'm just adding another layer, another another textural element uh, to, to the hair, right? 
And uh, and this is good because you know if you actually look at this reference image, you know cow cow fur is it's it's kind of its own thing, really. It, it's it's I don't it, I'm trying to think of other animals that have the same kind of hair texture as, as cows, with the exception of say maybe deer or or elk or moose or something like that. But um, but it's this is the best technique that I have found so far to really um, convey that that same type of type of texture and when it comes to most uh, most any drawings that's going to be the big thing that's the differentiator between say drawing a duck uh, and then drawing a shark um, and then drawing a cow is um, is that texture right because different texture means a slightly different technique so just uh, just keep that in mind okay so I'm just taking my my makeup brush, my elf brush, and I am just hitting this little here, hitting a little there. And the thing that I love about this brush with the diagonal cut in it is that I can stand it, I can flip it, and I can use just the, the, the tip of the, the very top of, um, of the high point of the angle in the cut. So. so here I'm just taking my hard charcoal and I am starting to just add um, a certain level of, of texture to that side of, of the cow's face. And then here I'm just taking my number two smudger and remember how I was going through on the uh, forehead, the top of the forehead of the cow, and I was just kind of leaning it on its side and pushing and pulling slightly here and, and pushing and pulling slightly there while, while I'm doing the same thing um, in this step. And you can do this pretty much all over your drawing. Again, it just offers more control. That's, that's the big thing with smudgers, is you're able to smudge, you're able to con uh, convey a softer look, a lower value, but you just have way more control than, uh, than you do with the brush, even that, even the elf brush, so. Okay, so base layer. If you actually look at where the nose separates from basically the, the rest of the cow's face here, it is all of a much higher value, like what you see around um, the cow's uh, eyes. So, and then the tongue. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to, um, to draw this one is because I, I really liked how this cow was, he's picking his nose, man. He's picking his nose with his tongue. Tongue picker. <laughs> I just thought it was really cool, so I wanted, I wanted to draw it. It was a little different than all the other ones. This one had some some character, right, as they say. So, okay, so we have our base layer. Again, focusing on those lower values. And then here I just kind of got to kind of clean this up a little bit. So it, there we go. And then I'm just going to go in with my, with my smudger. Kind of build that build that back up so I have that differentiation between where the tongue ends and where the the top of that nostril begins. And I'm just standing my smudger up on end and I'm kind of building up the the low values. I'm focusing on the low values, not not the high values, just the low values here in this step. And this is how we bring out that that three-dimensional look um, in the in the cow's tongue. This is how we do that. Just one layer after another layer. That's really all it is. Okay. Then here's a little trick. We'll start start from the bottom and then work our way up at a slight angle. See how I'm following that same angle? This is a way that you can make it look rounded, right? Okay. So now I'm going to take my medium charcoal pencil. I'm going to make sure that uh, my tip is as sharp as I can get it. I'm just going to start right here. You see how the nostril, there's the beginnings of the nostril here, and then there's a differentiation between the top of the nostril right there and the tongue. So I want to put a defined line right there. And then a defined line right here. Oh, so, okay, so you see that? See how my tip broke off? That's something that you have to be conscious of when it comes to medium charcoal, and that's why I never use a soft charcoal for my line work. But one of the reasons why I wanted to show you guys that is to let you know that even I make mistakes. I make mistakes on every single drawing that I do. But the cool thing about this method is that there's a way to fix it. And I'm going to show you how, how to fix that. But first, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to kind of solidify this tongue. I'm going to bring this defined line out. 
and into the mouth and kind of let that fade off into nothing. And then I'm going to take my mono zero eraser and you just hit this part. Just hit it nice and good. Just retrieve it. And then, actually while we're here, I'm actually, if I'm looking at the reference image, this, this value is way too low, right? Way too low right here. So I'm just going to retrieve that higher, higher value. And then you take your smudger and you just very lightly start to blend, right? Push it into the paper. And then you push your smudger right along that defined line, right along that defined line and you just work it. And what will happen is that line will become less and less prominent and it'll blend into the form of how that tongue rolls, in, especially in that specific spot. And then you can take a medium charcoal if you want to, and just very lightly uh, continue to build those lower values. And then you can go in with a smudger and you can continue to, to blend uh, that charcoal because you see how it's kind of gritty, right? We don't want that. That doesn't look realistic. So we're going to hit it with our smudger and just continue to blend it. And that'll give us that. It'll give us a form of gradation and, and it'll make it look nice and smooth. But you see, even though I completely messed up, and that's about as bad as you can break a pencil tip um, in a drawing, but I was still able to, um, to fix it. So... That's what drawing's all about. It's a lot like life, man. <laughs> you make mistakes and you learn from them. And the world keeps turning. And uh, you get wiser, you know? As is with life, it's the same thing in drawing. So, okay. So now, moving on. I want to start, uh, this is my 316th smudger. And I'm just, again, I'm looking at all of the areas of, of low value first. I want to bring out that low value. I'm just running this sideways. And this is kind of bringing out that contrast between uh, the soft part of the nose and then and then the furry part of the top of the nose and, and the side of it. So and then here while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to start... I'm going to use my smudger. And the reason why I'm using my smudger for this step is because this is kind of a smaller area, right? Remember how I always say... If you're in a tight spot, use your smudger, more control. You know, and I, I could have done this with a brush, but I wanted to show you how to do it with a, with a smudger. Okay, so now this is the part where I'm going to uh, retrieve those higher values. And I'm going to make sure that the direction that the little fuzzies, right, the short, short hair is flowing is the direction that I'm uh, uh, pulling when I'm retrieving the high values with my with my mono zero eraser. So now coming down off the top, actually I kind of made a mistake here, but I'm going to take my smudger. I'm going to bring this in a little closer. You see that? Just like that. Boom. Fixed it. But here I'm just going to go in, I'm going to pull down. So I'm pulling uh, top, top to bottom. And then here I'm switching it up and I'm pulling left to right. See that? And that's just that awareness of, of how the, the hair is flowing. Uh, it's underlying form. And that's what that is. So Okay, so now moving on, what I want to do is I want to kind of more or less start to solidify uh, the opening part of uh, the nostril with my, uh, with my smudger. I'm just kind of blending the, uh, blending the, uh, the tongue as well. And then here, if you actually look super close at the reference image on the left side here, just underneath the tongue, there's actually a part where um, it's, the, it's the other part of the of the basically the top lip and so I'm just going to use a hard charcoal and kind of bring that out and then there's like a lot of little whiskers and doodads here and there so I'm just more or less gonna gonna bring those all out with my hard charcoal um, and you can use a medium charcoal for this um, as well um, but I would recommend using a hard charcoal for your whiskers first and then if you want to go a little darker or a little heavier um, go ahead and grab your your uh, your medium charcoal but here for these, I would recommend doing a hard charcoal. You see how we're able to kind of bring out that, that really, really short texture. I did a drawing tutorial on my Skillshare channel where um, we were drawing a French Bulldog and uh, he had, you know, French Bulldogs have really, really short hair. And this is the same kind of approach um, that we used, uh, used for the French Bulldog. It also works for cows. <laughs> so, but here we are, just really short strikes. And the big thing about this is don't necessarily worry so much about um, what your 
strikes look like, just focus on the direction. Because if you can nail the direction and the flow of where these little strikes are going and how they're flowing with each other, you'll be able to simultaneously convey texture and nail your uh, underlying form. So. And then it's real light, just hit this super light with a brush, super light. Do not press hard at all, just let it glide across the paper. There we are. That kind of gave us a form of gradation. And I'm gonna take my medium charcoal, because it has less binder in it than that hard charcoal, and I'm just gonna bring out the lowest value in this nostril. I'm just gonna pack this in, because this is a super low value, right? Super dark. Pack this in. Bing bada boom. There we go. Because if you look at the reference image, I mean, this is one of maybe one, two, if we count the shadows on the hip, on the shoulders of the cow, one, two, three, four, five, it's like only six areas in the entire drawing where the value is that low uh, on the value scale, so. But now here I'm just doing, this is just texture. This is just texture, so I'm using a very light pressure control because I, I do want to convey um, a lower value but remember how I was talking about with the ear, when it comes to detailing with medium charcoal, don't press very hard. Don't press very hard. Okay. So now I'm gonna use my 316 smudger and just a very light pressure control. And I wanna start, I wanna start bringing out the, the, the form of, uh, of the nose, of this part of the nose, so. We start from the line and then we work our way away from the line, right? Because when it comes to lines in a drawing, those are boundaries, right? Where things are in front and behind of other things, so. Okay, so now we're gonna take the number six brush. And I'm using the brush for this step because I do want a nice soft look and I wanna move quicker. And there's a lot more space here than there is down say on the lower lip, but I can hit this real light. Adds a form of gradation, but because I hit that lower lip, with the smudger, I already have some underlying texture, which is what I want. Okay, so now the battery operated, oh, 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 I love this eraser. So if you actually look the texture on this nose, this was the hardest part for me to, to understand and convey with this specific drawing. Everything else was fairly simple, but this nose, and I think the reason why is because I don't, you know, the, the way that texture is, it's not like they're all dots, like you saw with like the pig tutorial that I did, right? They were like elongated and like kind of kind of rounder on the end and then they'd get skinny and then they'd get round again. So this is a way that you can convey that really weird looking texture on the cow's nose uh, very quickly, right? The quicker you can do something, uh, the more proficient you are, thus the more art you can make and, uh, and the more uh, money you can make so yeah, if you don't have a battery powered uh a hoo -hoo eraser uh definitely definitely get one for your toolkit yeah you won't regret it okay so now i'm just adding a, a defined line this has a very very thin line quality right as compared to uh, my other defined lines uh, in in the drawing now here i'm just going ahead and seeing how I'm adding and building up this line. You see how that just very quickly brought that, that left lip in front of the cheek. So it's kind of elongated the drawing. It's, it's quick, quick, simple little things like that. You know, just little, little, little doodads, you know, that really um, can change the aesthetic of your drawing for the better, so. Okay. Okay, got the elf brush here. So now I'm just going in and and uh, just I'm, I'm basically soft softening the drawing in certain places that that need it. And now I'm taking my number six brush, and we are building up the um, the chin uh, of this cow. So again, trying to focus on the uh, the lower values first. Looks like there's kind of a kind of a lip there. And I'm using a very light pressure control, right? Again, because I want, I'm going to be going in and, and retrieving the high values with uh, with my Mono Zero eraser, so I don't want to uh, 
I don't want the charcoal to be pressed into the paper. That, that's not going to do me any good at all. But now here, as you can see, there's actually a lot of like a lot of little whiskers and stuff on uh, on the bottom chin. So you can do short little throws for the actual hair texture that um, that is on the chin, and then you can do longer throws um, for the the parts of the chin where there are, are whiskers. And just because all those whiskers on the bottom of the chin in the reference image are a higher value. Um, remember how in the pig tutorial I was talking about how just because you have a whisker that's a high value in the drawing, when you're dealing with a black and white scale, sometimes it actually works out in your benefit to um, use your hard charcoal or your medium charcoals and bring out those whiskers as a low value, right? It's kind of a paradoxical thing on the, uh, the black and white uh, spectrum uh, when it comes to drawing. So just, uh, just be aware of that. Maybe give that a try for your next animal drawing when it comes to the whiskers and, and uh, let me know how it goes. Okay, so basically I'm just adding to that, that texture, I'm highlighting those higher values. Now I'm simply just going in and using my e.l.f. brush to kind of get in and, and add gradation in, in, in tiny, tight spaces, right? I'm not adding gradation to everything. Now I'm using my number six, and now I'm adding gradation to everything, right? But I'm not pressing hard at all. Brushwork is always, always light. Dust, brushwork is like, I call it, I call it fairy work, right? You want to be light like a fairy. <laughs> so, very light-handed. Then here with the Monozoa eraser, I'm just going in and adding, adding that texture. And then here, I just don't want to add some, add a lower value there and kind of, bring out some kind of some kind of surface form uh, to uh, this part of, uh, of the cow's nose. Okay. And then if you feel like you've lost some detail, you can go in with your ohu and you can and you can bring that that detail uh, back out. Just be careful with the step because you can you can overwork the paper if you um, if you go back in uh, too much. So just be aware of that. And here what I'm doing is I'm just going in and just adding subtle variations uh, in value between my low values and my high values with uh, with my smudger. And I'm just taking my my medium charcoal here, just kind of building that up. There we go. Sweetness. Okay, so now I am taking uh, the number two smudger, and we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start building out these shoulders. So now, what I'm doing is I'm taking that soft charcoal, and I'm laying it down with the uh, with the smudger. And the trick to this step that I wanted to talk to you about is obviously when you look at the reference image, the actual head of the cow is what's closest to the camera, right? And the image itself is elongated. Now, I know that in the reference image, you do have texture here. You do have texture on the shoulders, but in the wake of drawing, there's a little trick that you can do. It has to do with um, optics, but basically what you can do is, you know, you can still add the contrast, like here, this is the shadow of, uh, of the ear, right? You can add that lower value and you then you can hit the higher values with brushwork but you don't necessarily have to go in and add any detail to the shoulders and there and what this does is this gives the drawing that elongated look right it makes it it makes your viewer when they look at the drawing focus on all the detail on the nose and in the forehead and the ears and the chin but because there's no detail to be had on the shoulders, their eyes automatically don't really spend a lot of time looking at that because there's really nothing to look at, right? There's nothing to, to soak in. So 
that's just a personal preference of mine. That's just something that I do on certain drawings. It depends on if I'm working with an elongated image or if um, I'm not. But uh, just be aware of that, that little trick. And that's something that, that's something that you can do. And, um, but again, and that is definitely personal preference. Okay. So now I'm just going in and I'm using my medium charcoal here and I'm just kind of more or less solidifying all of this, uh, this texture on the cheek because I want this cheek to look like it's closer, right, to the viewer than that shoulder is. I'm just taking my smudger and I'm just building up these uh, lower values. <clears throat> But the thing to note here is I'm not pushing hard. With smudgers, you should never have to push hard. Just load up your charcoal and just touch the paper and just do that over and over and over and over again. And your value will get lower and lower and lower and lower. Okay. And then this is another thing that I love about the three layered method. So what I'm doing is I'm starting back from where I began, right? Because remember how we drew this thing in sections and I'm going back through and I'm just adding those lower values. And as you can see with lower values, it brings out more and more and more contrast between high values and low values in the drawing. And it just makes it pop. It makes it, it just, it almost feels like you're giving it more and more dimension and, uh, and so this is this is a way where you can go back through everything that you've done. And um, I've been known to spend hours doing just this, just going back over it again and again and again. And essentially what you're doing is you are uh, streamlining your drawing or uh, what some artists call uh, refining your drawing, right? So. But then here I'm just going back through with my smudger work. Much like we did before. And uh, this is just uh, giving that, uh, that contrast between everything. And because this drawing has a lot more implied lines than it does define lines, rather than using line work to bring out contrast in your values, you can use value itself. And so this is what they call value relationships. Basically, it's just a way of saying that you have you have low values, you have high values, and then you have your mid values, and they all merge together in harmony, right? In your drawing. Remember how I always say, accentuate the value scale, right? You want complete black, complete white, and then you want all the different value variations in between. And, um, and if you do it right, and you use implied lines where uh, they belong, and you use uh, defined lines in the right way, um, it'll really make for a, a nice drawing for you. But what I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'm adding detail work where I think um, it needs it. Now, every, every artist and every person who will look at your work views the same thing in slightly different ways. And so for you, you can spend uh, as much time uh, on your detail work um, as you want to. One of the things that I talk about in some of my tutorials is when I think that I'm done, when I think that I've gotten to a point with my drawing where I'm like, you know what, that looks good. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this one uh, in the books. Uh, I actually sit down and I give it an, a whole nother drawing session. I typically try to draw in what, uh, what I call the 25-10 rule, which is where I draw for 25 minutes, I set a timer, and at the end of that 25 minutes, I take a 10 minute break and I do some stretches, you know, upper back stretches and stuff or whatever. And then I come back and I draw for another 25 minutes and so on and so forth. So whenever you think you're done, sit down for maybe say 25 more minutes and really just, just analyze your drawing. And, uh, and I think, I think you'll be happy with the things that you notice when you walk away and, and you come back to it. So. Okay, sorry about the tangent. Basically, yeah, so what we're doing here is we're just going in and I'm softening up everything. And 
I softened up the eyelashes. Now I'm going in with a hard charcoal. And I'm just more or less bringing, bringing out that uh, that subtle that subtleness of uh, of the eyelashes that you see uh, in this in this drawing. And I'm just going back through and and adding any any small detail. You know, it's it's funny when it comes to drawing it's it's the small things that seem to uh, make the biggest uh, difference especially in the wake of uh, of detail work like you see these little whiskers all these whiskers i just added like for whatever reason that just really made it kind of kind of come together but but then here like say this for example if you want to go in and add subtle detail with your um with your charcoal pencil um you can do that too you know the the charcoal pencil is kind of like the smudger it just you have the least amount of control with your with your brush and then you have mid control with your smudgers and then you have the most pinpoint control with your uh, charcoal pencils especially the sharper they are the more uh, the more control you have so uh, just be aware of that but when it comes to building up these lower values with your smudger do not press hard you don't need to just just don't be afraid to go over it and work it again and again as long as you're not using a heavy pressure control as you build up those lower values you're not going to damage the paper it's when you're pressing hard and you're going over it again and again and again that's when you're going to see that you've overworked uh, the paper right so just just keep that in mind okay This is coming together pretty good. I'm just cleaning up some of the edges, some runaway charcoal, right? And I'm just taking my number six and just kind of more or less blending, blending the shoulders of this cow. Okay. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm just taking my number two and I've uh, darkened up, I've loaded up the tip of the number two smudger with some soft charcoal and I'm just touching the paper and then I'm twisting pressing down and just twisting that's all I'm doing here and now I've gotten kind of kind of bringing out that detail that you see um, in uh, in the nose and then I just kind of want to blend that a little bit and now I'm gonna take my mono zero eraser and I, I, I want to have a little bit more contrast here so I'm gonna run my Mono Zero Eraser right next to this low value, right? There we are. And then I'm gonna put it right here. There we are. And that's just, that just lightened it up a little bit. I like the way that looks. Now here, now here's a cool trick, check this out. So we're gonna take our Mono Zero Eraser and you see those rolls, the rolls in the neck? This is how we're gonna bring that out. Now I know I said you know, you don't have to put definition or detail work in the shoulders, but when it comes to the neck, I wanted to I wanted to put these rolls in. I wanted to show you how to do that. So we're just hitting it with our Monozo eraser. We're bringing out the edge of those rolls because that's the highest value, right? So we've brought them out, but we want, we don't want them to be too prominent. So we're gonna hit it with a brush, soften it up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my smudger and this is the trick. I'm gonna run this smudger immediately next to those high values and what this does is this is going to bring out each one of those those neck rolls um, in this cow so here we are I'm just going to go in and you can use a number two or you can use a, a size 316 uh, smudger uh, for this but see this look at this do you see how it just it gives it a sense of form right it gives it a sense of those rolls kind of being on top of each other or or being being behind each other right but at the same time because um, they're implied and because we've hit it with our brush and and softened it all up the eye the viewers eye when they look at your drawing they'll be like oh okay cool awesome yeah like this this cow has a neck right it has shoulders but because all the detail work is in the ears and the forehead and the nose of the cow that's where their uh, that's where their eyes are going to be subconsciously drawn to so and that's just and that's just a, a principle of optics, so. But also, uh, Da Vinci, uh, he's one of my favorite artists, and um, I really like how he um, basically said, you know, when you, when, you, when you think you're done or when you need to take a break, just do that. Just walk away from your, from your piece 
and come back whenever you feel ready and you'll notice things about that piece that maybe you didn't notice before and that's a part of uh, refining uh, your drawing so drawing cows is fun all right now in other news um, we have uh, branched out and we are on Skillshare now, um, where I have a handful of uh, premium classes where I'm teaching uh, how to draw uh, pet portraits. And uh, of course, we are on uh, Patreon as well, where I have a couple different tiers. You know, for $2, you can uh, participate in actual poll voting. Uh, for $5 a month, you get early access to all of my YouTube videos. And uh, for $10 a month, I offer monthly drawing consultations. So I hope this uh, tutorial helped you and good luck in your future drawings.